Hello everyone and welcome to the awards ceremony for Pro Tour Dragon's Maze 2013. We begin here at the end of our magic season with the Rookie of the Year. From Chile, it's Felipe Tapia Bercera. So here he comes, he's very brave. He's gonna have a go at this in English for us. Felipe, how does it feel to be Rookie of the Year? Elegí tener traductor porque quiero que Latinoamérica sea quien primero me entienda. He chooses to, uh, for having a translator because he wants Latin America to be the first one to, to listen first in Spanish. A very, very good answer. Let me ask you, what does it mean then for the Chilean magic community and for Latin America to have a Rookie of the Year? Ojalá que todos se den cuenta de que sí se puede y de que ser el primer latino en ser en un rookie o que, y, que el, y colocar el nombre de Chile es el, un orgullo gigantesco. Uh, he wants to tell everyone from Latin America that so, so they, they can see that you, you can do it uh, and it's an honor to be the first Latin American and the first Chilean person to be the rookie of the year. We're cheering for him in Chile and around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the rookie of the year, Felipe Tapia Becerra. And now we move to our player of the year. It's a richly deserved award with a great history in the game. Please welcome from the United States, Josh Utterleighton. Josh, fantastic stuff. You've had many great days in Magic over the last few years. Where did yesterday rank as you saw Player of the Year come into view? At the very, very top, yeah. It didn't come, nothing else came close to it, especially with all my friends doing super well in the tournament too, you know, Luis locking up platinum. It was the very, the very top. Let's talk a bit about friends. You have a terrific group of friends who also turn out to be fantastic Magic players. What is it like inside Team Channel Fireball? It's awesome, it's just hanging out with all of my closest friends. Uh, I mean, that's really what we are. We're a group of friends who love playing Magic, and so we get to do that together. It's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, the player of the year, Josh Utterleighton. <laughs> and now, it's time to welcome the final Pro Tour winner of the 2012-2013 season here at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze from the United States. Give it up for Mr. Craig Wesco. <laughs> Craig, a fantastic performance. How much do you like California Pro Tours? Uh, that's the uh, best place to have a Pro Tour. Last three, top eight every time, and now with the trophy. Yeah, uh, White Weenie, I stuck with it, and it has given me the, what I needed every time. You've been playing for absolutely ever. Tell us what it was like the moment you knew in that final game that you were about to claim that trophy. I, I just thought of my team, how this is the first time where I really felt like I had the best team in the world as my team. Can't say more than that. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Pro Tour Dragon's Maze, Craig Wesco. We'd like to thank all of you for being a part of this 2012-2013 pro season. We're going to do it all again, but this is the end of the award ceremony. So for now, it's back to the news desk and Marshall Sutcliffe. Welcome back to the news desk. Marshall Sutcliffe here with Zach Hill. Emotional moments down there in the feature match here. You can tell how much it means to uh, to Craig to have won this event. Let's talk a little bit about how that how the matchups went. You had some predictions, and we had we had some notes about cards going back and forth. How did it play out in your mind, Zach? Yeah, I mean, we saw in that very last game exactly the kinds of interactions we were talking about. I mean, again, Supreme Verdict, traditionally in this format, the exact weapon you want against aggressive decks. But between uh, Rootborn Defenses, Advent of the Worm, and, of course, Experiment 1, Voice of Resurgence, mm -hmm. it just was not enough. 
tough. I mean, Ochoa had a removal spell. Yes. Turn after turn after turn after turn, and it just didn't matter. Oh, no, it's really incredible. You know, it's in fact, it was funny. Luis Scott Vargas uh -huh. said on the thing, he said, you know, the green white player actively hoping that his opponent has Supreme Verdict. Right. Right? Like, right. how often how does often that is happen? Yeah. That is not your normal set of circumstances. But it looks like Craig managed to find a niche in this format with the, you know, with the colors, with at least one of the main colors that he loves that really kind of didn't care about Wrath. I mean, again, he needed to build his deck that way. Of course. But and, he found it. And it's not just good against this one particular deck. I mean, we see a ridiculous sideboard against the red-based aggro decks. Mm -hmm. Against Zoo, you still have, I mean, it's you're a very fast deck with some meat on it. So, yeah. you know, again, in a mid-range fight, you still have, you know, Rootborn defenses to play Simeon, Grunt, Ambush attackers, gain you card advantage, develop your board. You've got Advent of the Worm, one of the biggest creatures on the table. You have Loxton and Smiter, again, one of the biggest creatures on the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have weapons for every matchup while playing a fundamental solid two color deck with a great curve I mean just really kind of showed up and 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 crushed the format yeah, yeah really I mean he's got to be proud of the, of the list that he came up with here as uh, like you mentioned you know he got he got all of this utility all of this pressure all of this out of just two colors where a lot of people were in three yeah and I mean let, let's definitely also give credit to the team of players he was testing with you know, absolutely I, I didn't really put two and two together until I saw them on the stage I mean Brian DeMars Jackie Lee Ari Lax GCB Gabe Carlton Barnes yeah yeah a huge team of very, very, very talented players. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's easy to get lost in the conversation around like Star City Channel Fireball. There are a lot of great teams here today, and uh, one of them produced a champion. Yeah, and uh, it was a pleasure to see, and also a resounding victory. Yeah. I mean, geez, 3-0, and like it kind of didn't feel that close when we were out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's one of those games that like, it, 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 in a matchup, it, it, things seem really one-sided until the Esper deck seizes control. And then it, so, you know, it may have seemed more one-sided than it was, but uh, it certainly definitely felt that way. It felt like Greg was in the driver's seat the entire time. Yeah, it did feel that way to me too. And especially, again, when you get to the point where the green-white player is rooting for a sweeper to be yeah. cast, like something <laughs> has gone either horribly awry for the other player or you have a really well-built deck. It looks like we're just about ready to bring Craig onto the stage here in a few minutes. He's gonna get mic'd up. Okay. And, uh, and then we're gonna get a chance to have a chat with him and kind of see how it felt for him. I'm excited to do that. You know, you made top eight of a, uh, of a pro tour right before you went into Wizards. And true. you know, we saw that this was a kind of an emotional moment uh, for Craig. For you, did you have similar feelings when you finally kind of reached that pinnacle of making it to the top eight? Well, I certainly didn't win. <laughs> I know, I know. My, my pro tour, so I, but, but no, of course. But I mean, I mean still, top eight's yeah, a big deal. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I definitely remember in the last round, I was like pumping my fists, I like slammed the table, I was like writing all kinds of stuff oh, you in my were that hand guy? to try to get yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was huge, you know, and but I knew that I was. But you can help it, right? Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, you're not like trying to gloat or whatever, it's sure. just very exciting, you know, and, and, and certainly, you know, in the modern era where tournaments are harder than there have ever been, require more preparation than they've ever had. Yeah. You know, you, you have worked very, very, very hard for this. Yes. And, uh, you know, when, when that payoff happens, it, it feels really good. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the deck list that we have here, because what we've got is there's uh, uh, so, so we had an Esper list in the finals, right? And the Esper list was, there was a lot of them in the top eight. Yeah. Do you think that this tournament is going to be remembered for the Esper list that produced so many successful uh, decks here in the top eight or for the list that actually won? Well, part of that is kind of our job. Uh, you know, we, we definitely want to make sure that, you know, th there's all kinds of things to talk about in this yeah. tournament. I'm really excited about Craigslist. I think it's good, but we definitely can't forget about the huge dominance of Sphinx's Revelation and Sphinx's Revelation derived decks across the tournament. We saw it in the Bant Control list that yep. Team Star City thought was the best deck to bring to the table. We saw it in Esper Control. We saw it in the top eight, two in the blue, white, red control deck. Yep. So, I mean, th there's a lot of stories of this tournament, a lot of things that we can choose to talk about. And one of them, I think, has got to be the dominance of Jace and Sphinx's Revelation. All right, well, we've got Craig ready to go here. He's all mic'd up and he's standing with Sheldon Mennery right over there at our wall. So I'm gonna send it over to them so Sheldon can uh, get a quick word in with Craig. Hey, everybody over here in front of the wall with uh, Craig Wesco. First, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Coming in, it looked like you built a deck to battle against this field specifically. Um, tell us a little bit about, about how you chose this deck. 
Well, it was actually uh, a team creation. I didn't build it. My contribution was the one Civic Saber, <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was mostly you want to apply early pressure, and then when the opponent tries to deal with your things, you have thwarts for their answers to your threats. And it just, I didn't have a problem with anything. So how, how much advantage do you think it gave you this weekend that you were playing a deck that just fits into the way that you love to play Magic? Uh, it's, it's the only way I can do well. I 05 the last Pro Tour, and I wasn't playing a deck I was comfortable with. And this time I decided, you know, even if it's not the best metagame choice, I'm gonna go with what I know. And it just so happened it was a really good metagame choice. All right, there you have it from the champion's mouth himself, Craig Wesco, congratulations again, well fought. Thank you. I'm Sheldon Mennery, back over to Marshall and Zach. Hey, welcome back to the desk. Yeah, you heard it from him. Incredible stuff, uh, and I, you know, I, I think there's something kind of poetic about Wesco winning his pro tour uh -huh. here with that deck. It's his style, he's perfected it, he's put a lot of time mm -hmm. into uh, understanding the very subtle nuances. I mean, I think most people can be like, well, I'm gonna cast creatures, I'm gonna attack, and then if they go away, I'll cast more. That part's sure. basic, right? But there's a lot of subtle nuance to the way that you play these decks because you have to eke out every little piece. And uh, I think it's great that he won his Pro Tour with his type of deck. Yeah, that's something people always talk about. Is it hard to play aggressive decks? Is it hard to play control decks? The truth is, it's really hard to play both of them. Sure. Yeah, I think it's easier to just sort of autopilot and win with aggressive decks, but sometimes it's a lot harder knowing your back is constantly against the wall. You're kind of teetering on the brink of extinction. Right. And uh, you've got to eke out value from every single card you can cast. I have a lot of respect for players that are really good at that, because I certainly am not. So. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, guys, let's bring up a quick slide. We want to show you the next few webcams that we have coming up before we uh, before we sign off here from San Diego. So n the next live video webcasts are actually on the same weekend, June 8th and 9th. There's Grand, uh, Grand Prix Gothenburg and there's also Grand Prix Providence. Providence is going to be the team limited GP. So we, we definitely want you to tune in to these. Uh, the European team is going to be in Gothenburg. You're going to have 24 hour magic for that whole weekend. So it's going to be an exciting one and uh, we certainly hope that you'll join us. I know I'm going to be at Providence. Are you going to be? I'm trying to play at Providence. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll hope to see you at Providence. And so those are, those are the ones that are going to be coming up soon. And, uh, yeah, you know, man, I think we're – is it about draft o'clock here? Uh, it's or? getting very close to draft o'clock. I, I feel like uh, we might have a draft incoming, and uh, we're going to need to, uh, to get to that. All right. We have pressing business. <laughs> yes, we, we have pressing yeah. business. No, but we had a great time. This was an incredible event and uh, in, in a great city, too. And, uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to sign off now for Sheldon Menry, for Zach Hill, for myself, for BDM, for LSV, for Richard Hagen, Greg Collins, and everyone here at the Pro Tour. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe signing off from San Diego.